And we're back. Video two. Um, hi, I'm Thack from Thack Ironworks. Uh, video two of the headboard for the Hobbit Hole uh, Nordic uh, bed frame headboard. I don't even know what I'm calling this. Art Nouveau is way where I kind of started out with, but I think I deviated more to the Norse. Um, I was trying to do a fusion there, but you can see like whiplashes are very Art Nouveau, I think. But then the knot work and then the wolf, uh, everything just very Norse. So anyway, I like it. I think it's good. I've carved this particular post. I've spent a couple months of evenings carving this. Um, done both sides here. Just... Here's the other side. I've got a Kurgan helmet. Um, on that side, I've got my wolf motif on this side, and on the other post itself, I've got the screaming woman. So I've got a lot of uh, angry, screaming faces. I'm quite pleased with that. This is all carved as much as I'm going to do it now. It's the kind of thing where I'm looking at, especially the sides here, I could do a lot more cleanup, but it's like, you know what? I kind of like the, the roughness of it, and you know, I've just got to move on with my life. So. Big payoff now, it's stain it. I always like the way that uh, pops things up. So join me, will you? And uh, let's stain this puppy. Okay, so back to this one which was stained two months ago and uh, you can see once the stain set in it lightened up a little bit. Uh, this is one still quite dark but it's very juicy and gooey yet. And then I spent a little bit of time sanding out the highlights to pop out that knot work, give it a little bit more of a contrast. Also I added my bling here, pointy little spikes and these rings here and also the nails studying that up, just adding a lot of texture, um, just something to catch the eye. So I'm going to do some of that stuff now. I'll move this guy out of the way and grab my other one. All right, I'll just demonstrate one just to give you an idea um, of what I'm going to do. I'll let this thing dry out then after, but this will show you my process. Cedar works really nice for uh, these nails. They, it's a nice soft wood. It's square head nails also have a square point on there, which shears into the wood. Um, so these, this type of wood is really nice for these guys. They bite right in nicely. Okay, so there is my nail studying. I've got five, five, and four. A little. X pattern in there and just do it by eyeball so it's got a randomy sort of look to it. Now the spikes are forged out of three quarter round bar and I've drilled a very deep hole and I just find that putting these in they usually stay in in a friction fit. Um, let me demonstrate. 
and I take it in until there's about an inch of protrusion there, which gives a nice um, pointy visual, but at the same time, it's, it's pretty dulled over, so shouldn't be too uh, dangerous while I'm in bed if I have a wake up from a bad nightmare or something like that. Uh, these I made out of bronze TIG wire, um, and I believe it was three pieces that were twisted together, and we're not going to show that on video. You don't get to see everything. I'm sorry, people. So, just give it a quick sanding before I put it in, so it goes from that to something with a little bit more highlights, and then... Oh, yes, I might have to trim this down so that it actually fits in. It's fairly subtle fit. that about that bear. Several weeks have elapsed and I have been periodically working on the headboard ring, the, the iron portion of it. I'm hoping that my good friend Amy is off on her own making the bee, working on that. So I'm not sure, haven't talked to her recently, um, but we're probably like a month and a half since we were last together, since you last saw us in the video. So anyway, this is what I've got here. So essentially a bunch of scrolls here, um, which is relatively straightforward, but trying to fit eight of the same pieces for all of these various pieces together. It's just been a long process. And these whiplashes are a real pain in the ass. Um, so I've got the ones along the bottom here, and right now I'm working on the filler ones here. So I've got one here that fills in, but this shape is uh, just very uh, fiddly to make. And it's taken me quite some time to get the eight of these fit it in there. Soon I will have that done. Once I've got everything tacked into place, then I'm going to move on to, um, I've got collars, leaves, flowers, um, and then I think I'll be using my favorite metal, bronze, to do uh, a lot of those pieces. And also, I, I think I want to do some snakes coiling around the bottom here. I need to thack this up a bit with the flowers. It's looking a little girly, so I've got to, um, you know, man it up slightly. So let's see how that goes. At this point, I am making little bronze flowers for the headboard. Um, this is about what the finished uh, flower is gonna look like. I'm gonna put a little spike in the center there um, just cause it's a little bit girly now. Now I need to thack uh, uh, it up a bit. So anyway, uh, let me just show you the progression of how these things are put together. So Eric, if you'll come over to here. I have a top bottom die here for a flower motif that I had made a few years back for a customer. So I'll just show you, this is the starting point for this thing. This top bottom die is a very quick and handy way to make a shape. And you can see I have just punched out an image there. So with that, I can then take those and then I draw out some lines here. All right, so using my stake here, I just start the shape on here. Should be noted that these are um, fairly rough finish. I'm not looking for a very highly refined shape.
Okay, once I have this, I'm bleeding. Okay, once I have this, I will just go to the table, clamp this down, and without pitch, I'm going to start putting some of the definition into it with a chisel. All right, so then these eight uh, flowers that I'm doing will be um, around the perimeter here, um, placed in there. And then to kind of balance that out, I thought I would do some leaves and I was gonna look at doing a very traditional um, decorative style of leaf. But then as I got looking at it, it just seemed that a very simple design was better. It was just, it wasn't uh, fitting in there. So I'm just gonna do something like this. I'm not sure if you're seeing that, Eric, which is a pretty simple triangular leaf, basically just bent with a vein in there. And then I just did some decorative um, bends on the edge using a pair of pliers. So we're going to have something that will be, I don't know, about there. And then another one on the other side, kind of wrapping up there with the collar. So those things are starting out like that, which is a, just a, a trimmed out piece that's got some hammer texture to it. And now I'm gonna bend this in half and then shape it to fit into there. So that's it for the foliage portion of this. Um, join me again later as I actually have this coming together. So yesterday I got a text from our fine, tiny vegetarian friend, Amy. She's making the bee, as you may remember from the last video. And let me just pull out my phone. I hate when customers do this to me. Pull out their phone and then scroll around. Just hold me on that, Eric. I don't want them to see it very well. But anyway, I was quite impressed. I didn't expect her to actually be this far along. And then I thought, holy shit, I need to start getting my act together here. And um, I've got components, but I gotta really start putting this together. So let's come in close here. I'll show you what I've got, and then I'll do a little demonstration of a few of the techniques. All right, so um, I've got most of the ironwork together here, um, and I've just made these tendrils here, which are going to be coming off of um, this Art Nouveau little swirl. So I've got to get those pieces fitted yet. I've got all my flowers um, roughed out and they're ready to be attached there. And then I've got a pile of these leaves, which still need a little bit of shaping, but essentially they go in, I'm not sure where you can best see this. Um, they go in on the same um, scroll as the flowers. So still lots of fiddly fitting stuff to do. Also, we have this roughed out um, some brass stock, which we're gonna use for the collars. And I don't know if you can see, we've got one of the sample ones on here. So um, all our joints here, we're gonna be collared up with brass. The B for the century, you might remember, is made out of brass. My flowers and leaves are made out of bronze. So I'm adding a little bit of diversity um, into the entire thing here. And I think it's gonna look quite fetching. Uh, and it should be noted, I'm doing everything fairly rough here. It's just I wanted the thing to have a very rustic feels and um, very organic looking. The bee will be a little bit more refined, but that's really the focal point. Um, so now I need to put all these pieces together. In addition to that, I've also got to frame this up to attach to my posts. So I've got my posts laid out at the proper width and then I've started drawing in the rest of the framework that's gonna tie this to the posts here. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a curved piece here and then some radiating points coming in here, kind of a broken wheel motif, which is something that I uh, keep visiting again and again, just something that kind of uh, appeals to me. So I've gotta make, basically now make these two pieces together in a logical, plausible sort of fashion. 
and I, I'm not even sure what the attachment points to this are because um, it's fairly specific. These my posts hit the ceiling um, because the hobbit hole is so low. So I, I don't. I've got a very finite um, parameter to work inside. So very fun and very tricky. Uh, let's demonstrate a couple of the pieces here, uh, such as my little tendril, which I thought added a nice, cool little detail to this. The problem with it is I've got all these little points on here, and this is some, this is my bed. Um, so, you know, in danger of snagging my negligee, um, you know, it's just something I'm going to have to be very aware of. So depending on what nocturnal activities I happen to be uh, up to, I'm going to have to be very conscious of where all these points are because um, it's uh, potentially dangerous. So, and I, and I like that. I think you should have danger in your sleeping area. I think that's uh, very important for a good night's sleep. Anyway, let's move on. So I made this cool little top bottom die thing here to make some collar stock. I don't know if you can make it out. Essentially that fits into there and I'm able to emboss my chunk of brass that I've got here. So I've got this annealed, just put it in there and quite simply hammer it into shape. Then it needs a little bit of rework the other way. This is not the greatest um, one step die in the world, but great for the texture that I'm trying to create here. Essentially, that's my process there. And then I end up with this little collar detail, which then can be snipped to length and bent into a U wrapped around um, to create the collars for that. There you go. Now I just pushed it down through the into the pritchel hole there and then I can just use my little needle nose there to massage it around a little bit to create my cool little tendril shape. I think you get the idea there. I've always liked that shape. It's kind of a fun um, visually interesting shape. So now I got a lot of fitting to do. I will see you in the next clip. Okay, I have spent three days assembling things and have gotten to this point here. Um, so things are coming together nicely. Uh, it's just, it's taking forever. Even though none of this is very refined and all these pieces actually, everything in itself is fairly quick to do, just the sheer number of different components all coming together is just this thing's a time sponge so I'm um, starting to get a little bit of fatigue here but I am in the home stretch now and uh, <coughs> sorry <coughs> sorry just wanted to um, show you one little thing here and that is wrapping these little tendrils which are actually tiny little snakes which is a Frank Zappa reference if any of you guys uh, get that uh, Anyway, so I've got all these little snake tendrils here. I've got one more to put on there and I thought I would demonstrate that. So I've got my various pieces for that. We'll do that. Before we get into that though, I just want to talk about this collar here. Um, I was looking at this whole thing. I'm kind of designing it on the fly and wasn't totally happy with how these things were welded on here, transitioned in there. And I thought, well, maybe I'll put a collar on, introduce some more bronze to this. I put this on and I'm thinking, no, I'm taking it off. It's too dominant if I were to get eight of these around the perimeter. It's not the look I'm going for. It would make it to me too steampunky um, and it's pulling away the focus from the center where the bee is going to be. I'd like everything kind of moving towards that. This uh, is just too much. 
Let me know in the comments what you think would you have liked to see it this way. If you were doing it, would you have done it with the collar or without? Let me know. Anyway, moving on. All right, so the tail of the snake starts here um, and I'm having to drop into this groove here. So what I'm doing is coming around and then I make a mark there and I have to now flip it over and put a weld on there. Let me show you. All right, so I started with my tail piece and wrapped that around until I got to the point where I wanted it to stop. Then I'm gonna to go to my head piece, which is going to land right here. And now I just come back around and then I can cut that off at the right length. And well, you see. Something like that. Now, because this uh, piece is going right against the stone wall, flat against there, it gives me the luxury of having an ugly side. And this side is ugly. Oh boy. Look at the way the collars have come up around. Everything is tacked into place and it just, you know, whatever it takes to get this thing fastened on. So it looks good from the other side. This side, not so much, but that's okay. Uh, so now I've got this piece welded on. Let's flip it around and get that laid into place with a torch. I just need to cut away my failed collar experiment and um, then we can start assembling the entire headboard. Here we go. All right, home stretch here. Things are coming together. I should thank today's sponsor. Scope Nouveau, I'm using their clear metal wax. Um, I use this product all the time. This stuff is just great. I'm using it on brass, bronze, steel. I also use it on copper and zinc. Um, and it works equally well on all of them. Just a, a great finish. Um, also, Scope Nouveau, I use their... There it is. This guy here. What do you even call this? Traditional gel patina. Brown for bronze, brass, and copper. So I did that for the antiquing on the brass and the bronze. Anyway, we've got this ready to now assemble to my wooden posts. This has been over six months since I started those posts, so this one was a long haul. So let's, I don't, I'm not sure how this is gonna go actually. There's curvature on the posts and I have to line up. Uh, well, let's just do it and see what happens. Something like that. So now, oh, 
just want to take a look at this. This is pretty cool. I like it. Now I need to track down Amy. About a week ago, she was 90% done the B. Uh, I wonder if she's made any progress. So if we can get her finishing off and get this in here, then we actually have a finished piece. See you in a second. Hello there. We are back for the conclusion of the headboard. I don't know where we're even at at this. Um, we, the lovely and talented Amy is back in shop here and she has come bearing a B, which we're gonna get into momentarily. So I just want to take a second and ask you, Amy, how was the process? We were several months since we were last together when we started this. How did it go? I, hopefully well. I mean, you'll be the judge of that. Um, it was interesting working with this material, so I haven't worked with bronze before, so it's the first time, usually just copper. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a bit more fussy, that was good. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So without further ado, why don't we grab the bee and we'll take a look at it. And we've just got a couple finishing touches, or Amy, I should say, has a few finishing touches to do on it, and we'll proceed. So, let's start. Okay, so something like that, obviously we have to cut it out, so it will be then emerging from the ring. Um, yeah, so Amy, you said you want you have a little bit of work to do here just so we can see the final completion. Then we're gonna begin cutting it out. So I'll just give the floor to you. Yeah, so like Rob was saying, we're gonna cut this out here and I'm gonna flip it around because um, we made a last minute decision that we might wanna have things in front of and behind that circle. So I was kind of excited about that. So this is gonna come around and you push down that way, like that. Sounds good. Let's begin. Okay, um, we're, Amy's got most of it cut out here. We've got a couple more sections there. I'm just gonna show you what our next strategy is. I usually use my, uh, these are stained glass pliers. They've got a little curvature in. And we're just going to bring this around. And then we're able to get the jaggy edges back and then we can just polish them with uh, something mechanical quickly. Um, but this gives you a nice uh, crisp edge without it being jagged and filed and sharp and stuff like that. So it's kind of a safety edge that you can touch, but it really, I find also adds to the 3D, it just helps it pop and it, it makes it plausible that it is a full in the round shape. So we've got a little bit of this ahead of us and then we'll catch up with you for the finishing. By the way, I'm thrilled with this thing. I don't know if I've said that before, but I'm pretty happy with it. And can't wait to see, once we get the patina and pull out the highlights, well, just stick around. All right, so several hours have elapsed and, and poor little Amy here has been working away at bending in the corners, filing, cutting, and this has been a mofo, which is a technical term that we, we, we can't talk about here. But anyway, it's, it's now cut out and I think we've got it to the point good enough. Um, and we're going to do some antiquing on there and see if we can get a quick transformation um, dark to light, all that stuff, and then I'll have to do some fine tuning, attach it to the bed, and then you'll see some beauty shots. So let's just get into this. Okay. So I had uh, rinsed it in water to neutralize the effect of the patina. Now, while it is still wet, I'm gonna go in with some 300 grit sandpaper just for a quick um, pulling out of the highlights and leaving the dark spots. I'm probably gonna have to do some fussing with it after, but this should be able to give you a pretty fast transition and an idea of what the finished product is gonna look like. Are you excited, Amy? I often do this with steel wool, but I find um, it's a bit of more of a bold contrast when you go in with the sandpaper, and I just like that effect. Because there's so much um, specific texture on this one, I thought I would do that.
the reason I chose brass for this is so the, the brass in the dark we get our, our coloring for the bee. It just seemed to organically work very nicely and it seems to be working. I could leave the legs totally dark, but I just can't resist having the highlights. I want to see the texture there. So what will follow is probably another half hour to an hour of um, specific fussing. And then I will wax that and then it will be attached to the bed frame. You will see in the uh, outro the beauty pictures of it actually in place in the Hobbit hole, um, all mounted up and everything like that. But for our talking portion of this video, this will be our closeout. So I just want to recap, this was a collaborative effort between a number of people, not just myself and Amy, um, but also Victoria in Ukraine, um, who Early on, I had sent a, a rough doodle and she sent me back a design which this whole bed frame was based on. So I very much appreciate that and we'll have a link in the, right Eric, some sort of link to maybe go to her little video of the, the drawing. Um, also, I, I should point out my two helpers. Um, I've got a intern, a co-op student who did a lot of um, grunt work on the headboard, doing things like the collars, getting um, stuff prepped out. And my assistant, Ethan, it was very valuable in helping me with some of the forging and assembling some of the pieces. And then, of course, Amy. Okay. Come up finish. Yeah, it's cool. Thank you, Amy. I'm thrilled with the work that you did. This is really a very intricate piece, and um, I had good intuition going into this thinking that this would be something that you would be really able to sink your teeth into and you did not disappoint. So thank you so much and uh, good collab and I will have this for the rest of my life. So thanks a lot. And thank you, my gentle viewers. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, you should be doing that. I expect to hear a lot of comments on this one. I want to get your feedback because there's a lot happening in this overall project. This has been over a year since I've been started this whole headboard thing. So with wood carving, um, repousse, repose, however you want to say that, iron work, there's just, it goes on and on. This was a complex project and I'm so happy that it's finally coming together. And I will see you in the next video. Back out. See ya!